Hey everyone, welcome to a lovely yarn podcast. My name is Amber. Thank you for joining me for episode. I have no idea because does it really matter? I don't think it does. Anyway, um, I actually woke up feeling like I wanted to podcast today, which was, I love when that happens. I love when I wake up feeling inspired to film a video. So I thought we're going to go with it. It is late morning. What time is it? 1049. And, um, yeah, I just thought we're gonna, we're gonna go with it in the midst of a Monday, which I don't normally film on Mondays because Mondays are normally my housework days, but I guess I must have gotten some housework done over the weekend because I don't have as much to do today as I normally do. So instead I'm going to take some time to film this podcast. Thank you guys so much for coming to watch. I'm in a little bit... Of a different location still I always film in our bedroom um, but normally I'm across the bedroom sitting on our little chairs in our sitting area there but today I decided to sit in front of my yarn shelf slightly inspired by Tara of a loop from a loop a loop through a loop she always sits on the floor in front of her pretty yarn and um, also I'm going to insert a clip into this video at some point on some previously recorded material that I had to record because I was actually going to be giving the knit to somebody. So I, when I filmed that, I just plopped right down here. I don't know why, but I plopped right down here and I filmed that there. So I thought we'll just keep it consistent. And um, so, yeah, I, oh my gosh, I... I don't know what's been into me lately, but I have just been wanting to cast on so many different things, which is unusual for me. Normally, if I get more than two, maybe three whips going at a time, I feel overwhelmed and completely like my brain just feels cluttered. But for some reason, and you know what? It's probably because it's spring. <sighs> I come alive in the spring. I do. I come alive in the spring, guys. Um, I feel like a new person. It's a reawakening that's probably where all the inspiration is coming from and all the energy to cast on many different projects. So I guess I should start with what I'm wearing. So this is my Georgetown cardigan. This project took me a long time and I've already talked about it in a prior ep episode. So I'm not going to um, get into the details of it other than it just took me a really long time to knit because it was super boring because of the color and all the stockinette. But once I finished it, I'm so glad I did. I wear this a lot. I don't know if I included this cardigan in my most worn knits video, which I filmed, what, back in February? But if I did not, it's because I just finished this cardigan recently, maybe in January, maybe in December. I can't even remember now. And I hadn't realized how much I loved it. So I really love it. I wear it a lot. It is getting some pilling here. It is, um, what did I knit this with? Cascade 220 Heathers. Yes, that's what it was. It was Cascade 220s. I think this is, is this a superwash? Because they have superwash and they have non-superwash. I don't know if I have any. Mm, I don't think I have any of it up here. But, um... I really like it. I like the fit. I did the pieced together version, which I'm really glad I did. And I also made the shawl collar portion way wider than the pattern called for. But um, again, I'm really glad that I just persevered through that uh, because I like it. I like it bigger like that. And I'll just insert a little clip here for you to see what it looks like full length in case you haven't watched that prior episode. But it's a really comfy, cozy cardigan and I love the fit of it. Okay, now let's get on to my finished objects, which I don't, let me, let me think here. I only have two and one I don't even have with me. That's the one that I pre-recorded, but I'll show you the first one that I have. It's in this just adorable little bag by Olivia of This Handmade Life. 
she's been keeping her shop updated like very consistently so go check her out I'll link her down below and I've been very tempted to buy one of the spring bags that she has right now and I feel like her bags are really reasonably priced like I think this one was $28 and it's got the like the little leather ends or the zipper pull and then it's just such a nice heavy duty material which I like so these socks are my what I'm calling my sunset socks I forgot to grab my sock blockers but I am not even gonna grab them because you you it's okay we don't need those right isn't this yarn so pretty it is so pretty I love the color of this my daughter loves it but they're too itchy for her she's very sensitive and um, so I will be keeping these for myself this yarn I will link it below as I do everything else it's super garn active um, probably does not No, it doesn't have a color name just a number so I'll put that down below too and I'll also put the shop that I buy all of this kind of self striping more sturdy commercial yarn there's one shop that I almost always buy it exclusively from on Etsy and she has super super fast shipping I think she is located in Wisconsin here in the United States which by the way I'm in Pennsylvania for those of you that don't know um, so these are beautiful and bright and they were a nice thing pair of socks to be working on during the yucky <laughs> gray days of Pennsylvania winter which interestingly enough so today is April what is it April 4th um, we have had some very interesting weather last week we literally had a tornado go through our pasture and then the very next day it snowed. So that's what the weather's been like here. Tornadoes are extremely rare for, rare for Western Pennsylvania. And the thing, what it, what happened was it was like 1130 in the morning. My son was meeting with someone for work. My husband was in the basement in his office working and my daughter Lily and I were upstairs just doing our stuff. And my phone went off with the, you know, that loud, severe weather alert alarm and I looked at it and it said tornado warning for my area and I was like yeah right <laughs> I mean I know guys I know a warning a watch the warning is like pay attention watch is like just keep an eye but I went out on my porch and I looked I'm like it doesn't look ominous at all I mean I have to say that I have this I have always had this fear of tornadoes and high winds. I do not like it. I could, I would have a hard time living in the South where, you know, they get hurricanes and, and also areas that get tornadoes very frequently. I don't even know. I don't even know how I, I would be able to live there. I guess I would work, have to work through my fear, but I went out and I'm like, I have seen way more ominous looking clouds than this. And so I came into my house and I stood at the front window and I was just looking and it was strange but it crossed the valley Molly Molly my my dog's about to start barking Molly Molly she sees our neighbor's dogs out the window and she thinks that she has the right to growl at them anyway I was standing at my front window and across into my neighbor like across the street and my neighbor and then on the back side of my neighbors is like a valley and I see this wall of clouds and I thought that is strange I have seen walls of rain come at me before that's really cool but it's rain and you can tell it's rain this looked like clouds and I was like that's unusual and I'm just standing there looking at it and before I know it it's moving through my front yard and it smacks up against my house and all this noise and I yell to my daughter get to the basement and she's like I want to take a picture and I'm like you're not taking a picture get to the basement interestingly enough I forgot to grab my dogs um my husband came rounding up the steps got the dogs we all went to the basement and it was over in like five minutes and we came up and a telephone pole was down on the end of our driveway. And then on the other side of our like property line, there was a big maple tree that had fallen down and taken out some utility lines. And so the road was closed for a while and the fire trucks had to come out and cut down the tree. And, but, um, 
our neighbor across the street said that he had seen rotation on like on the other side of our pine trees in our pasture area, but it didn't touch the ground. Well, we found out later there was actually a confirmed touchdown just like in the valley that I was looking at when I saw the weird wall of clouds. And then it must have kind of lifted and then it touched back down and, and it went a little north of us and it was um, an F2 tornado, which I know for those of you who live in area areas that are prone to tornadoes, you're probably like, that's no big deal. I know, but we are not used to that kind of weather here. We have gotten tornadoes in Western Pennsylvania, but it's not a very frequent occurrence. It's more of an anomaly. So anyway, so we had that Thursday and then Friday was snowing. I don't know how I got to that. Oh yes, because I was talking about these and saying how this bright color was so nice to knit on during the gray, long, dark days of winter. Um, so yeah, love them. Probably won't even wear them now until next fall. It is still cold here. I could totally wear these now because it's only, I think it's supposed to be a high of 48 today, which is not cold, but it's also not warm. So, all right. And then, okay, so that is my one fi finished object. And the only other finished object I have, I'm going to actually stop here and insert the clip that I have from when I recorded it last week. Okay, um, so I wanna show you this sample knit that I did for Jody of Flower Hill Fleeces. And um, it's, today's March 30th. No, it's March 31st, the last day of March. And I was thinking about doing a podcast today, but I'm not gonna have time because I need to get my seeds planted. I thought I'd have them done by now, but I haven't, so. I thought, well, I'm just going to film a little snippet and then I will plug that into my regular podcast episode whenever it is that I get to do that, hopefully next week. So this shawl is called the Elegant Garland Shawl by Lisa Hannes. Okay. And it is knit in Jody's Egyptian fingering, which is, darn it, I forget again. I'll put it down below, but I know it's like 55% alpaca, silk, and then some linen, but I can't remember the ratios or the percentages of the plant fibers. But here it is. It's already been blocked because I'm going to take this down to her today. And as you can see, it's, um, so it's a, the pattern is written for a fingering, fingering weight yarn. And um, this, this yarn, I think, is maybe a light fingering. And honestly, I could have made it bigger because look how much yarn I have left. Hold on. Look how much yarn I have left. I have a lot of yarn left. I didn't weigh it, but that's a lot of yarn. But, you know, I was sample knitting, and I'm like, oh, I always hate to mess around when I'm sample knitting. And I thought... Surely I won't run out of yarn if I make extra, like I knitted it completely to pattern, but I thought it's not looking as big as it does in the picture and I didn't measure the wingspan. I mean, it's, it's further across than my arms can stretch. Like I can't stretch it the whole way. So it's plenty big, especially for a spring and summer shawl. And I think that's the whole purpose of this is because it's done with the Egyptian fingering. It's supposed to be a lightweight shawl which it is beautiful drape. This, this yarn has beautiful drape to it. Um, but yeah, it turned out really nice. And actually I said in my last podcast, I'm not crazy about working with plant-based fiber, but I got used to, and I think, I think what it is is it doesn't have a lot of memory and this has over half alpaca, but even alpaca yarn does not have much memory either. But this actually was not, hard to work with. Um, it was different in that it didn't have all the spring that wool has, but it wasn't, it wasn't like working with just a purely plant-based fiber either. So I would say this is a good alternative. I think this would make a really nice summer tea, like this yarn, um, because it's, it's just so light and airy. So yeah, this is it. And as you can see, it has, it's worked from 
this side to this side. Actually, that's a lie. Your work, this, this turquoisey stripe is done last. Okay, so it's not from side to side. It's, it's knit on the bias. I think that's what it's called, knit on the bias. <laughs> and this patterning is done with slip stitches, so it's also very easy. So yeah, this is a great pattern and a great, and for a lightweight shawl, I think this is a great option for yarn. Perfect size, I think that's the perfect size. I'm sitting on the floor. This is very last minute. Um, so see, look, I think that's the perfect springy size for a shawl. Or even if you don't, you know, yeah, look at that. It looks, it looks great. It's, I like that size actually for an anytime shawl. Um, so yeah, I recommend the pattern and I recommend the yarn to go with it. And as you can see, if I would knit this again, and if I wanted it to be bigger, although I have to say, I really like the size. I would definitely have lots of wiggle room to make this shawl even longer, even wider. So, um, and Jody does have a website. I'll link it down below. I've linked it lots of times. If you want to check out this yarn, if you're local, she, she will be um, doing a trunk show at Yarns by Design in Oakmont, PA in April at some point. I'm sure if you would get onto yarn, uh, yarn, Yarns by Design's website, that it will tell you all about that. And Jody also teaches some knitting classes and stuff there. So she's there pretty frequently. And um, also I've knit with lots of other yarn from Jody. I actually have quite a collection of her yarn. Why is that so hard to do that, to point? <laughs> um, and I've loved all of her yarn. So in fact, I'm so excited because today when I take this to her home, cause she's also happens to be my neighbor. Um, she has some fiber from her sheep that she was spinning. I saw her spinning it on Instagram today and I was like, do you have any extra of that? <laughs> Can I buy some off you? Because I have not, I have not spun since 2019 and I've just been itching to, but nothing that I have in my fiber stash is, a, is calling my name right now. But when I saw that fiber, on Jody's Instagram story, I was like, oh my gosh, it's just so white and fluffy looking. And I thought maybe this is what I need to get myself out of the spinning rut. So when I take the shawl, I'm gonna get some fleece too. And um, so maybe when I actually do film my podcast, I'll have some yarn to show you that I've spun from that fleece. But anyway, yep, great shawl. All the details will be linked below and I'll see you soon. Okay, so now let's move on to what I'm working on. And I told you that I was had the desire to just start a lot of new projects. I've only started one, two, three, but I have the yarn and I'm getting ready to cast on two more, which I will also talk about. Yeah. Yes, two more. So three currently casted on with varying degrees of progress and two more that I have the yarn and everything ready to go, except I need to swatch, which I'm considering not even swatching because I'm feeling adventurous or stupid. I don't know which one it is. Okay. So let's talk about this Jennifer Stein gas pattern. I love her color work patterns and I've made how many of hers have I made only two, but I've made them multiple times. Yeah. So this will be my third one, although I have more than that because I also have the yarn to make the Vintersoul pattern, which um, I'm going to cast that on, but not until next fall because to me and the yarn that I bought it in, it's a very wintry looking pattern, but let's, let's not go there. Let's stay on track, Amber. Okay, so Golden Fern is the one I'm working on. I think what I'll do is I'll insert a picture of it right here. For you to see better than my black and white printed out pattern. So right here we'll insert a picture. Okay so this is how I picked this pattern which is really crazy. Normally I pick patterns because I like them and then I pick the yarn out after. 
Um, but I have been wanting to use up yarn that I have in my stash already. So I've been trying to pick projects based on the yarn that I already have. And I bought, oh boy. hold on, I, got... I want to grab it here. So I bought this yarn from Knit Picks. This is the only one I still have in the skein. It is the Hawthorne Fingering. And this colorway is Eugene Tonal. Eugene Tonal. Yeah. Okay. It's um, like a dark purple eggplant. Eggplant color. That's what this is. I bought four skeins of this to make Caitlin Hunter's... Shoot, what was Zweig. That's what it was. And I even bought that pattern a long time ago. Um, so I had the four skeins and had the contrast color and then I went to actually cast that on the other day and I was looking at the pattern I'm like I don't think I'll wear this very much which I don't know I might I I just wasn't feeling that pattern which kind of stinks because I'd already purchased that pattern but oh well uh so I got on I did a Ravel research no I didn't I got into I got onto Ravelry. I got onto Jennifer Steingass's project pages and I searched through her patterns for a fingering weight sweater. That was how I did it. I did everything backwards this time than what I normally do. And multiple patterns came up, but I really liked this golden fern one. And I, I'm sorry, guys, you really can't see, but I just love this, this color work design in here. And then it's also on the sleeves. And so I bought the pattern, had the yarn. Let me show you my contrast. So this is Old Wire Road Fiber Co. Although when I bought it, she was still the Blackberry Ridge. And this is her Briar BFL. And it's um, called Bloom. So these are my two colors. And this pattern actually calls for multiple colors to be used in the color work section, but I just wanted to use one. I like to keep things simple most of the time. Um, when I get too many things going on at once, I sometimes get overwhelmed. Unless I'm in the kind of mood to work with that kind of project, uh, yeah, I normally just like to keep it simple. So the pattern originally calls for your main color, and then, which this is all fingering weight, and then three contrast colors because you kind of do like a, a fade with your contrast colors in the color work section. But I thought, nah, I'm just gonna use what I have and keep it easy. And I had, this is I think the color, it was between this one, this is kind of convenient sitting here in front of my yarn. So it was between this color, which is the Old Wire Road Co, Fiber Co, or this color, which also would have looked really nice. And this one is by Sweet Sparrow Yarns. It's Pajama Day. This is what I originally bought to go with this for this wig. But then this has more color. Um, I know you probably can't see it very much on film right now, but it has a little bit more color variation in it. It has some um, pops of like yellow color in it too. So I thought that might be more interesting in the color work section rather than this and then I started worrying well if this bumps up against this because this color here and this color here are pretty much the same color so I started thinking well if this bumps up against the edge of the color work section it's gonna just blend right in and I'm gonna lose that crispness of the color work where this does not have any dark it's all much more it's the same color like it's in the same color family but it's all much more lighter. There's no like dark pops. So I knew I would get a nice, or at least I think I should get a nice crisp edge on the color work. I hope that makes sense. So this one, I, I'll just use it for something else. Oops, oh my goodness, I have, I have yarn falling down on me. Um, so it's a top-down sweater. And I didn't swatch. I am so bad with that. I hate swatching. I, I hate swatching.
swatching. Some people like swatching. I don't, to me, it's like, another. I just want to start knitting, which is not always, I mean, honestly, I would say that I've probably done okay with not swatching. Um, I have, I mean, honestly, I've swatched for projects and then they've ended up not fitting. So it's happened both ways. But overall, I have been pretty lucky with not swatching and yet still somehow maintaining or getting a, a an item, a finished project that actually fits me. But so I cast this on. I used the old Norwegian cast on, which I actually had just learned in another project I cast it on, which I'm going to talk about next, because it gives you a nice, really stretchy edge. It's very similar to the long tail cast on, just, let me think, like two extra steps to it, but not hard. And it looks tricky when you first watch a video, and I will try to remember to link the video that I watched. Um, it looks a little tricky, but it's, it's not once you get it. It's just, yeah, you can do it. Um, so I cast on using that and I cast on for the fourth size, which was a 43 and a half inch bust finished measurement. And I'm zipping through it. It's, it's knit as a yoke, which you can see my increases. It uses a, um, invisible increase, but you can still see that, but I'm assuming that's going to probably block out. And then you do a little bit of raglan shaping right before you split, split for the sleeves, which I had never done a pattern like that before. But anyway, I'm sitting here knitting and I'm thinking, wow, this is super stretchy and it is super wash yarn and I should have taken that into consideration. And this is really why you should gauge swatch and then wash your swatch before you start knitting. Um, because I'm like, okay, this is super stretchy and I know what happens with super wash yarn when you, when you get it wet, it grows. And I started to get a little bit nervous that this was going to be too big on me. And so I was knitting, 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 and I got to the last section where you were supposed to increase. I think there were five increase sections in the yoke. And then you increase again in your raglan shaping just for, just for like three repeats. But I was looking at it and getting nervous that it was going to be too big on me. And I was slightly freaking out. So I did a, I just did a gauge, which this is not, I know this is not correct. Okay. I know guys, so don't tell me. I know. I just went and I did, I measured my gauge, which it's just not correct and for multiple reasons. Okay. But this is what I did. And I actually was exactly on for not only the, like the across, but also the rows, the rounds like this. But well, first of all, I was shocked that I was exactly on cause that hardly ever happens. Second of all, it was not blocked. So I knew it would stretch. So even though I was on now, once, if I would have blocked this, it's going to grow a little bit. So what I ended up doing is not doing the last increase on the yoke. And I just, I think I had to decrease four stitches to get to where I needed to be for this, for the next smaller size, which I think was a 40 and a half inch bust. Let me see. It doesn't really, I guess that doesn't really matter, does it? But you know what I'm talking about? So I just had to kind of like back step a little bit. Um, and then I kept knitting and I kept thinking, wow, this still looks really, really big. And then last night I split for the sleeves and I started knitting down here because I want, I just wanted to get to where I could split for the sleeves because then I could try it on once I knit down a little bit under the armpits of it and see how it was looking. Um, and I, but I was looking at it and thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be too big on me. It's going to look sloppy, but you can see how far I, I knitted down. So two inches maybe under the arm. And I tried it on last night and it looks like it's going to fit. So like, it's not going to be too big. Um, and then, you know, it is going to grow a little bit when I block it. So I'll just deal with that then. But I was very relieved. I was just pushing through. I'm like, I just need to get to where I'm going to split for the sleeve so that I have a more accurate representation of how large this is going to look. And I can try it on then. But I'm, I'm good. After trying it on last night, I felt much calmer and more confident <laughs> in this sweater. 
And um, so I'm going to keep going. And I've got about, I think I have maybe four more inches to knit in the body before I start the color work. You can either make this cropped or regular length. I'm going for the regular length. I'm not a big cropped person. Um, if I'm going to wear cropped sweaters, it's going to be over a dress because I don't, I wear high waisted jeans, but I don't really, and I do have some cropped sweaters, but I normally wear a longer shirt underneath them. And I'm definitely not going to show my midriff. No way. Honestly, I never did that. But really now as a 40 some year old, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, you can if you want to, but this gal isn't. Um, so I'm just going to do the regular length on it and wear it with jeans. That That's what my plan is. And I'm hoping that this will be, I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, you can see that. It's a, it's kind of an open, slightly opened. It's, it's not a real tight gauge. So I don't, I think I might even be able to wear this sweater to work. I don't wear a lot of my knitwear to work because I get too hot. Now I'll wear this to work and then I'll take it off because it's a cardigan. But as far as like my pullover sweaters that are my hand knits, I don't know that I've, I'm trying to think if I've ever worn one of those to work because I'll, when we get really busy, I get really hot because I'm moving around a lot and then I'll get cooled down a little bit. And so it's just, but I think this will be, I think this will be good um, to wear to work. At least that's what I'm hoping for anyway. And um, yeah, so I told you what the yarn was for that. I'm also being bad and I'm not doing, I'm not alternating skeins, although I did alternate the skein where, so I've already want, gone through one whole skein of yarn and that was about right here where that one ended and I started a new one. So for probably, I don't think you can tell. No, you can't tell. So for probably 15 rounds, I alternated skeins between the old skein and then the new one. And I thought that way, if there is any kind of change, it won't be completely blunt. Can you tell I like to keep things simple, but in keeping things simple, sometimes I regret that in the end. Most of the time I've gotten lucky with it, but sometimes I have regretted it but we're good. I think we're going to be okay. All of this yarn came from the same dye lot, but this last, the reason I did not, um, put cake this up is because it is a, t the color is a tad bit off from the other three skeins. So I'm hoping that I don't even need it. And if I do, I'll use it for the arms. I'll use these for the body and then I'll use this one for the arms because it was just the same dye lot, but I don't know that happens, I guess. Right. Okay, so is there anything else I wanted to say about this? I don't think so. This one, okay. So this is my new bag. I showed this on my last podcast episode. This is uh, my friend Tabitha, Missy Mae Tutus. I linked her on my last episode. Um, this is a backpack bag. I love this vintage clip clasp. It's so stinking cute. So in here, I have something for my daughter. It's the... Ripple Bralette by Jessie Made Designs. Now, as some of you may remember, last spring I casted on a different pattern for my daughter Lily, and I got that pattern because it was cheaper, and I didn't want to spend nine dollars on a pattern, which is how much this one was. Which I'm not. I don't want to get into that discussion on is it worth it or whatever. I just felt like, oh, nine dollars for a little bralette is a lot of money for a pattern. And I didn't, I was trying to avoid spending that. Um, so I bought a different pattern. I don't even remember the name of it at this point, but my daughter is really tiny. I needed the smallest side and it was turning out way big for her. So I try, I ripped it out and I cast on less stitches and I was trying to adapt like this part here, the actual, like, what is that? You know, the part that goes up <laughs> the triangles. I was trying to adapt that part of the pattern to fit the cast on stitches that I made and I could not get it to work. And I got so frustrated that I stuck it in the bag and I put it on the shelf 
And I told Lily, I'm sorry, but you're not getting the cami because I can't figure it out. Well, then this spring, I said, honey, do you still want one of those? And she was like, well, yeah, I'd, I'd like to. She likes to wear them under, like as layering pieces. And so I thought, all right, so many people have made that ripple bralette from Jessie Made designs and have been very successful with it and it's supposedly really easy to knit so I am just going to buy the pattern so I did I bought the pattern I'm actually using the same yarn that I was that I made the other one with which is a knit picks yarn and let me see what so it's this it's got so it's a um like an off-white with black charcoal and yellow and it. I don't think I have as good lighting here in this corner as I do on the other side of the bedroom and this one is Hawthorne fingering spark speckle so I didn't get very much done but this is what I've got so far basically just the ribbing and this pattern is the one that said to use the old Norwegian cast on because you want it. it's such a it's this pattern has a lot of negative ease and so you actually go up I think two needle sizes to cast on and to do the first one or two rounds of ribbing and the old Norwegian is it's very stretchy look like it's it's very stretchy and that's so you can actually pull it over your head to get this on this is like a hat I would look ridiculous if I wore this one. So I just started the um, body portion of this. And from what I've heard from other people, this goes by really, really quick and it's an easy pattern. So that's exciting. After that whole thing last year of trying to figure out all that, I, you know what? I, when I knit, I just want to, I just want to knit. Um, I want, I would love to say that I, you know, could just sit there and come up with something like knit as I go and come out with some great looking sweater or whatever. But that's not, that doesn't sound relaxing to me. Knitting is my way to relax. So I want somebody to write a pattern out for me and I want it to be a good pattern that's clear or mostly clear and tells me what to do. And I'll, I'm willing to adapt and stuff, but I don't want to have to come up with the whole I don't want to have to figure things out too much. You know what I mean? Because that's, to me, that's not relaxing. <laughs> I'm thankful that some people do enjoy that because those are the people that write the patterns. I just like to knit them. Um, so yeah, that's what I got. And honestly, I never thought that I would be interested in a bralette. Here, let me show you. Let's see? But I will say that this so I have some shirts that I have to wear it's not that they're see-through they're just lighter material so I always feel like I have to wear a cami underneath them and all of my camis are longer and sometimes I don't want a shirt sticking out underneath the shirt I'm wearing like I don't want the cami to be longer than the shirt um so I thought, well, this would maybe work if I made myself one or two of these in lighter colors that I could wear under some of my lighter shirts. Um, and I could make it short like this or have it go right a little bit longer so it hits the top of my jeans and it would be tight so it wouldn't give any extra bulkiness. I thought I might end up making myself one of these bralettes, which I never had any desire to until now. The one thing I will say is I'm not sure how you would wear this on its own because do you see that? Can you, can you see, you can see through it, right? Because these needles are, they're, at, uh, what is it? Six, US six or 4.0 millimeter and you're using fingering weight yarn. And so it's, there's, it's open. Um, I would not feel comfortable wearing this alone. I do not, like, I don't want to show things to people. <laughs> I don't know how else to say this other than, like, 
this this area here I'm not going to just you know show to people so nor would I want my daughter wearing this um, so as a standalone piece and I know I, I'm sure people probably do but you know my person my personal conviction is I you know those are some private areas and sorry I'm get I've got a tangle here I'm a little distracted what I'm getting to is I'm just not sure how this is going to be as a standalone piece and I don't see Lily being able to wear this as a standalone piece. I don't even know that she was planning on doing that. I think she just wanted to wear it under stuff, but even to wear it with a cardigan over top, I just, I feel like it's going to be a little see-through here. Um, maybe once I block it and if this yarn blooms, which I don't know if this yarn is going to bloom because I don't know that I've used this Hawthorn. I mean, I'm currently using it for two different projects, but I don't know that I've used it other than just now. I may have knit a pair of socks for my son with the, with this. I'd have to look at that, look at those socks and see how they have, how the fabric has, um, you know, kind of bloomed out after washing them. But as it stands right now, I would not feel comfortable with myself or my daughter wearing this as a standalone piece. It would be fine for layering, but it would be way too see-through um, to wear by itself. So, yes. But we will see. We will see. Anyway, so yeah, let's move on. Put all this away. And I'm knitting the small size for this. I think there's an extra small and I'm going for the small. Yeah. I was trying to decide if I should do the extra, extra small or the small. And I think the small is going to be fine. I just went off her measurements. So as long as this is okay with the measurements, then we should be on point for that. All right. The last whip I have is another pair of socks for my son, Ian. And I'm, I'm talking quietly because he's out in the kitchen and our house is very tiny and I don't want him to hear me. So these, okay. If you're watching for the first time, I'm making, I'm knitting a pair of socks every month for my son, Ian, who graduates from high school next month and he'll be starting college in the fall. So I wanted to give him like a box of socks for college. And he actually really likes wearing my hand knit socks. So I'm excited to do this. Okay, so I am used when I was in South Carolina, I talked about this last episode. I bought Peyton's Croy, some Peyton's Croy sock yarn um, at the Hobby Lobby there. I don't have a Hobby Lobby conveniently close to me. And I've never I had a couple of colors of this Peyton's Croy that I had been looking out for, but had not been able to find at Michael's or Joanne Fabric Stores which are my local big box craft stores. So I found this at Hobby Lobby and it is called 50s Stripes, okay? And I thought, oh, that would make a really awesome sock for Ian. And here it is, I love it. Oh my gosh, guys, have you, have you ever knit with Peyton's Croy? This, to me, this is not fingering weight yarn. Mm -mm, it is not, it is, it's, it feel, it's definitely sport weight or even, it almost even feels like DK. And I, I cast on 60 stitches. What size needle am I using? Let me see if I can read it. It's so tiny. Um, oh, this is a size one needle. That's why these are such a tight gauge. <laughs> They'll be not, they're, these are going to be very sturdy socks. So yeah, it's a 2.25 millimeter or a US size one. Um, but I cast on 60 stitches. I normally do 64 when I knit fingering weight. And then it's just, I almost, I'm almost afraid. Oh, I hope they're not too small. I gotta, I should try them on my own feet. He doesn't have big feet. Oh no, they'll be fine. Okay, good. So I mean, his feet are bigger than mine, but I thought if I, if they're completely tight on me, I know they're not going to fit him, but I just think this is so much fun. I love these. I love these colors. And, um, I also love that it's so sturdy. 
I have knit with Peyton's Croy before and it's such a sturdy sock yarn. It gives a nice, and of course some of this is because I'm using a size one needle with pretty thick yarn for sock yarn, but it's giving such a nice thick. These are like boot socks. That's what these remind me of, boot socks. Um, so yeah, I am now just decreasing on the toe. I have been actually taking these with me. Wow. Brad and I have seen, it's weird, but we've seen two movies in the last month, which is unusual for us, but we needed something to do on date night. Um, we like to spend time outside on our date nights, but with the weather, it's sometimes challenging to do that. <laughs> uh, so in this in-between time, we are like running, we're like, what can we do? So we went and saw some movies. So I knitted on these in the movies. I will also take these. I'll keep them in my purse and knit on them at church. I know I've talked about that before. Cause like I only do it if I can position myself. So no one really sees me unless it's people I know, like my friends who know that I'm not just sitting there knitting and blocking out the sermon. Um, I actually can pay attention just, well, you know, you're knitters, you know what I'm talking I don't even have to explain myself, but sometimes I just don't want to come across as disrespectful. <laughs> so, but I will, I've been knitting on these at church. Um, and then yesterday at church, I got to the point where I could start the decrease. So that's what I'm doing. And then I will use, I will have used almost one whole 50 gram skein. And this Peyton's Croy comes in, um, 50 gram skeins, which are equal to 166 yards total. So yeah, I bought two and this is all I have left so far. So I'm going to be finishing up and have pretty much used a full skein, which I love that. Ah, uh, yeah. So, oh, I love this so much. They're such nice, thick, they're going to be such warm socks to keep his feet warm. Okay, so that is my last whip, but I wanted to talk to you guys about two projects that I have the yarn for, and I'm going to be, and the, and the, no, I don't have the patterns yet. I have one of the patterns, but not the other one, because I have, I want your opinion. That's why. Okay, so I have been, I am never typically one to jump on a pattern bandwagon right away. In fact, I'm weird. If a ton of people are knitting a pattern, something in me says don't knit it because I don't know. I've always been like that with almost everything in my life. If everybody's doing it, it makes me not want to do it. So, and that has translated into my knitting life as well. If everybody's knitting a pattern, then I, it's like this little rebellious streak inside of me rises up. I don't know. Anyway, however, however, Lately, and I think this is mostly because of my friend Jody of Flower Hill Fleeces, I have decided I want to make a love note, which is a tin can knits pattern. I think I'm going to post a picture right here before I keep talking. So let me put a picture in here. Jody has one, and every time she wears it, I think that's really pretty. <laughs> I would like to make one, I think, but when everyone was making them in the beginning, I didn't want to make one, but now I think I want to make one. So I had this yarn that somebody sent to me probably three years ago. A podcast viewer sent this to me in a very generous, I mean, look at this. And she, this is, this was 200 grams of yarn. Um, she sent it with a bunch of other stuff too. It really made my day. But I've been, I love these colors. Like I, I love, I feel like this will look good with my blue eyes. So, but I've just been like, okay, 200 grams of yarn. What am I going to do with that? I could make a shawl, but I didn't really want to make a shawl of this. I actually really wanted to make some sort of sweater. And then when I found out that the love note only takes, oh, that's not the right pattern. Okay. Um, I, yeah, so I, this is enough yarn. This right here is enough yarn for the love note. I don't remember the yardage that's needed. I think it's like 600 and some, I'm pretty sure it's 600 and some. And so this is 200 and some yards, or this is 800 and some yards, but it's made 
Um, with DK, so most people take a fingering weight and they hold it double with mohair. And that's what my friend Jody had done. And I really like, I really like the look of mohair. Um, the fuzziness of it, it just gives such a nice halo. It looks so cozy and luxurious. And mohair doesn't bother me like it does some people. And I'll, it and also, like some people get too overheated in mohair. I have not found that with my mohair sweaters. Um, I'm, I'm fine in it. I mean, they're warm, but I don't ever remember feeling overheated. So I went to Jody's to take her that um, shawl that I had sample knitted for her. I went down over the weekend and I was like, hey, I have this yarn and I want to make the love note. Do you have any mohair that would go with this? Well, she didn't have mohair, um, at least not enough for me, like in the same color and multiple skeins, but she had this Surrey silk that she hand dyed. Um, and it's 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% silk. And oh, I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, mm, I love it. Look how pretty and springy it looks. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. So um, this color is actually in this just a little bit darker maybe, but the same tones. So I'm going to hold this with this and make myself a love note. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited to start this. I just need to get this wound. I'm actually going to, I usually I'd be like, I need to finish one of these things that I'm already working on before I can cast on anything else. But like I said, it's spring. So I'm feeling super inspired and energetic. I am not waiting. I'm going to, in fact, I think I'm going to do it today. I think I'm going to wind this up into cakes and cast on, or at least get it in the bag wound up because I have found that I love my yarn to be in like the skeins that I get. It comes in from the dyers. I don't know what it is about me though, but I am less likely to start something if the yarn's not already caked up. Like I have some yarn that I have already caked up because I was going to use it for something. And then I changed my mind. Um, but when it's like this, I don't know why it feels like such a big chore to, to bring out my yarn ball winder and my umbrella swift. Cause it's not a chore. It's not a chore at all. It's just one of those weird things, but this is going to be my love note. I, this is making me really happy. These colors, these colors are making me so happy because they're reminding me of spring. Oh my gosh, this is so soft. I've never, I have never knit with the baby Surrey silk. Interestingly enough, I used to have alpacas. I had two Surrey alpacas and two wakaya. And I have tons of alpaca fiber in bins in my basement. I've only ever spun. Hold on, let me grab this. This is my one skein of alpaca that I ever, from start to finish, um, processed. So I washed it, carded it by hand. It was before I had my drum carter and I spun it and it is luxurious and I don't even know what I'm going to make with it, but it is, so, and this is from one of my alpacas. I think this was from Inferno. Inferno and maybe some gander. I think this might be a combination of some Surrey and some Wakaya. Surrey alpaca have more like hair. Well, they both have hair. Neither of them, they're, they're hair animals. Wakaya are the big fluffy marshmallows and Surrey are the ones that the, it kind of hangs and it has like maybe some coily curls. Yeah, well, not coily, just like waves. There we go. Kind of like this <laughs> where the Wakaya have the coils and it's just like, bring, you know, they get huge. Um, but this is my only skein because, and this is the biggest thing is the washing. It takes so much water to wash fiber. And we have a well because we live in the country and we don't have a very good well. So I have to be really careful in the summer. If we're not getting a lot of rain, I have to be really careful. I can only do like so much laundry every day and I have to space it out and we have to be careful with how long we're in the shower. So for me to wash fiber and honestly, the warmer summer months are the best time to do it as far as then being able to 
lie it out, lay it out and dry. Um, it would be hard. I don't really have a space right here in my house to do it in the winter. If I could do it in the winter, that would make more sense as far as the water, because, you know, it's typically wetter in the winter here. We don't have water problems in the winter, but I have no place to dry it, that it would dry fast enough. So yeah, that's my one skein of process from start to finish, from having the fiber shorn off the animal to washing it, drying it, carting it, and then spinning it. This is a very special, special skein. But, um, but I've never, I've never knit with like the, I've knit with alpaca, but not the alpaca silk, like real thin like that. So I'm excited to do that. Okay, let me look at my notes. So that's my love note. My next project that I have the yarn for and I'm going to be casting on, this is the one I need some advice on, okay? I bought this yarn um, for, this, it, for this pattern back when I bought the yarn for my Venture Soul. It was when Knit Picks was having a sale on their Wool of the Andes. And um, I wanted to get yarn to make the Throw Over by Andrea Mowry. But now I can't decide if I want to make the throw over or the throwback. And the throwback is the cardigan version. I, I'm, I'm not looking forward to doing color work flat. I like color work in the round. So I thought about just buying the throw over and steaking it. But I have never steaked a project before. So I'm slightly intimidated by that. Although not totally because I'm never going to learn if I don't just do it. So it's not, that's not what's completely holding me back. I'm just like, which would I wear more? Would I wear the throw over more or would I wear the throw back, the cardigan? Um, one thing I was almost set on doing the, the cardigan version. And then I was reading through, I always like to read through all the posts on the project page. And, um, there was a woman who said that she never wears it because her, it stays kind of shut up top and then flares out at the bottom. And she thinks it's because of all the weight up here from the color work. And then it just opens up on the bottom. And I thought, oh, I don't like that idea. I probably wouldn't wear it if it did that either. So then maybe I don't want to do the cardigan version. Maybe I want to do the throw over. I like to wear my pullovers and I do wear pullovers, but I think I might wear cardigans more because I can take them off if I get hot and put them on if I get cold. What do you guys think? Who of you has knitted it and which one and what is your opinion on it? I really am wanting to know, but I will show you what I got here. So for the main, these are the colors I'm going to be using, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. I just have this big box of yarn. It has the yarn for the, the Vinter Soul. Why do I have this? Maybe, maybe this is it. Does it take four contrast colors? I feel like it only takes three. I don't know. I think it might just be these, this right here, but maybe for some reason I have one of these in this box and that makes no sense to me. Why would I have only ordered one of this? I ordered this back before Christmas. Okay. So this is going to be Onyx Heather is going to be my main color. And then these three, that's Heather Blossom, um, Brass Heather, and Ford Heather. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I was not showing them as I was doing that. So those will be my contrast. And I totally got this idea from I Heart Knitting. I forget her name, but that podcast, I Heart Knitting, she did a, she did the throw over in the, this exact color scheme. And I loved it. So I took that from her, but I know I'm like, should I cast this on now? Because it is April, but I honestly am not a big fan of knitting and plant fibers, which I have previously said. And, um, I will knit with wool all summer, usually smaller projects, because if I'm well, we have air conditioning here, so if I'm inside, it doesn't matter. But if I knit outside, I'll, I'm not going to take a sweater out. I will take a pair of socks. But if I'm knitting indoors, it's not a big deal. Although, honestly, I don't I don't spend a lot of time in, inside in the summer. Um, 
So part of me was thinking that maybe I should just wait to cast on this sweater until the fall, but then the other part of me said no cast it on now when you feel like casting it on because I genuinely want to cast it on. I just need to decide which version, which is why I really need your help. I let really, if you have knit it, please let me know what you think, which version you've knit and what you think about it. Um, and then I want to, I'll knit it and then I'll have it for in the fall. So I'll have a new sweater to wear in the fall. Okay. Uh, and then there is one other pattern that I really think I'm, I'm really considering knitting. It's just a matter of, do I have the yarn for it? Because I don't want to buy more yarn. And I think I might have the yarn for it, which I'm going to talk about here in a second, but here I'm going to just going to pop a picture in of it. Okay. That's called, I think. I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but the heli top. Okay. First of all, let me tell you why I want to knit that shirt. I love those kind of sleeveless tops with the tie knot on the front and I wear them over dresses. I have several of those that I've bought in stores. I wear them over dresses all of the time. Like I have sundresses that are sleeveless or they have just like the real small straps and I will just layer one of those on top of it. And I think it looks super cute. And so I would definitely wear a shirt like this. There's not many summer knit tops that I feel like I would wear, but, and I don't want to knit things that I'm not going to wear. I don't want to just knit something because that's the thing to do. Like, I don't want to just knit a summer top because it's spring and summer. So knit a top that you can wear in the spring and summer. If I'm not going to wear it, then I don't want to knit it. But I genuinely think that I will wear this kind of a shirt because I already wear shirts like this, but it's just a matter of finding yarn. And I do have some yarn, but I don't know. It's this, I got this on sale for it's Karen cotton ripple cakes. And it's a pretty, it's a fairly thin. Let me see what this is to be. It's a light. So yeah. I think fingerings can is a num is labeled with a number two and this is labeled a three. Oh no, that's probably wrong because it says to use a size six knitting needle. Um, well, if I decide to do this project, this is going to be one that I am for sure going to need to do a gauge swatch and then that way I can adjust the pattern for that. Um, but anyway, I, I got two of these cakes last year at Michael's craft store and it has, this is called ice latte and it has 491 yards in it. It was on sale for like a dollar 99 per cake. And honestly, there was this color, there was like a nice, a pretty blue, a pretty peachy color, a pretty pink color. I kind of was. I kind of since then have kicked myself for not buying more, but I don't, I don't need it, but at the same time it's a really good price, but I was going to use this to make a project. And when I was looking up, I needed two different colors of it. And when I was looking up just to buy another ball of this, it was, I think, $14 or $15 to buy one of these. And I spent a dollar something for this. So I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So I have two of these ball, two of these cakes hanging out. And so this is a possibility for that if it works out for the gauge. Although as I look at it, it's 100% cotton. That can't be. Hold on a second. Yeah, it is. It's 100% cotton. Um, and it's a little bit thick and thin, so I'm not sure if it will work for that. And it might be too heavy. I'm thinking that this might be too heavy for that kind of a shirt. And then I probably wouldn't wear it. Honestly, this Knit Picks Hawthorne fingering, this would be a good, because it's so drapey. So maybe if I have enough left over after I knit my Golden Fern, maybe if I have enough lit, knit, maybe, let me start over, slow down, Amber, Maybe if I have enough left, I can use this and the leftovers from the golden fern to knit the heli top because 
unfortunately, like almost all of my fingering weight yarn, which is basically this shelf here, that goes up there. I typically only have one skein. Oh, oh, you know what though? I had a viewer send me this. <gasps> that would work. And it's coral. It's fingering. Yeah. Kat, I think Kathy sent me this. And I have four skeins of it. And each skein is 185 yards. So I bet I would have enough to make that. So anyway, I just um, feel like that might be a good option because I might, I know I would wear that shirt as long as it wasn't too heavy, which now that I think about it, this cotton's pretty heavy and this, this cake actually feels pretty heavy. So it'd probably make a pretty hot and heavy shirt. Um, all right. So I think that is it. The only other thing I wanted to mention was I found a new podcast. I've binge watched all of her episodes and her name is Nora. She is from the Netherlands, I think. Her, her um, podcast name is Studio Nora. And I, she knits and she also sews. And I, I am not a sewist. I can kind of sew very simple things. Um, I have a nice sewing machine. I have a whole fabric stash <laughs> that I mm, like got thinking, oh, I'm going to start sewing. And then I never did really. So I haven't, honestly, I haven't sewn for two years, but she does sew and she makes her own clothing. She makes bags. She may actually, oh, she has these beautiful hand dyed handmade project bags that she makes and sells in her Etsy. I think she has an Etsy shop or she has some kind of online shop, but she, she actually does botanical dyeing on the fabric and then she takes that and she makes it into, um, the project bags. But anyway, I really like her. I really like listening to her. She is, uh, her studio has lots of like plants and stuff around her, which I immediately am drawn to that because I love plants so much. And then she just has a very calm presence. I find that I, I really like podcasts where the, the podcaster's presence is very calm. That's, that's kind of like, yeah. Anyway, so I will link her down below. You can check her out. And, um, I think what else I started my seeds, although I'm waiting for some of my, I thought I had enough seeds left over from last year, but turns out I didn't. And I didn't discover that until the night before I was starting my seeds. So I had to place a seed order from two different companies. I buy organic and heirloom seeds. So I don't just go to my store, like local store and buy them. I um, always have to order them. I get mine from Southern seed exposure and Renee's garden. Those are the two sources that I buy most of my seeds from. So I got planted what I could because I had some seeds that I saved from last year because I do the heirloom seeds. And then I also just had some seeds left over from last year. Um, and then, yeah, I just have to wait for my next round of seeds to come and I'll start those. And we have shelving with grow lights set up in the basement because our, our, um, greenhouse is not temper right temperature regulated yet. So, um, we have to invest some money and time into figuring that out. So until we do that, we have this temporary solution of shelves and grow lights in the basement, which is what I've always done. We just went, uh, we've just bought some more lights and another shelf so that it's, um, it's just a better setup now for the plants. So that's exciting to have that going. I'm looking forward to spring. We do have buds on our trees. We have some pollen in the air, which is nice in the fact that it's spring, but not so nice in the fact that the allergies get a little bit ramped up, but that's okay. I'll take it because it's worth it to me if it means warmer weather, longer days, sunlight, and blue sky. Um, yeah, but that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and for saying hello for those of you that do. And um, yeah, let me... Oh. Let me know if you would be interested in seeing like a 
more of a vlog style type video on my spring prep. I've been filming a little bit here and there. Let me know if that's something you're interested in because it's something I'm considering, but it's vlogging is a lot of work. Actually editing is a lot of work. So, but I did get, you know, after doing Vlogmas, I did learn quite a bit. So I'm willing to put one together if that's something that you guys would be interested in. I know not everyone's interested in gardening and spring stuff, but some of you might be. So let me know and I'll see what happens with that. And I think that is it for the day. So you guys take care and I will talk to you next time.